to everybody will stand and turn to 348.
Amen. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see you out. Good to be able to be out. I tell you, I enjoyed a good Sunday school lesson. I uh, appreciate Grayson taking yeah. a, a stand. And appreciate the good singing, the good fellowship. Good to see you at church. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of places you could have been, but you chose right. to be here. Uh, yeah. And we, uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate uh, the goodness of God. You know, uh, I've heard preachers say, well, it don't matter. I don't care where people come or not. I do. 
And uh, sure. I like to see people at church. Amen. And uh, I believe church is a place where that you grow, where that you get fed. Uh, I don't believe that church is the only place that you ought to get to. Uh, 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 going for God, I believe you ought to read your Bible at home. I believe you ought to pray. Amen. I believe you ought to witness and talk to one another yes. about the Lord. And uh, yes. But church is a place where we fellowship, right. where we enjoy one another. And it, it's a joy uh, to be out in the world all week because this world is wicked. Right. And you get out in the world and, I mean, <laughs> sometimes you just feel like you can just scrape the felt off of you, and, uh, but uh, I'm glad that we're in the world, but not of the world. That's what Jesus is praying for over in John 17. He said, Father, I don't pray you'll take them out of the world, but you'll keep them from the world. Amen. Now, God could have uh, done away with us when we got saved and take us on to heaven, but he right. left us in this world uh, to be a light. And uh, I believe God's people. I believe church. I believe God established churches and communities, every community about. Uh, you'll see a church in it in this part of the country anyhow. I went out in Kansas uh, 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 hunting a few years ago, and uh, I mean, there ain't no Baptist churches that I've seen. And uh, I went to Iowa up there uh, hunting, and we stayed up there a few days, and I drove around over the country, and I seen one little Baptist church, and it looked like it had the doors closed, or it was about to close, and uh, uh, you know, it's not like it is around here, right. off from here, but God put churches in communities. He's given every community, and I believe this. I believe God give every community sufficient uh, talent to carry on a local church. Yeah. Over our country, Amen. I mean, you see, uh, he he get, he give them talent to uh, to sing, to some teachers, some preachers, some evangelists, and so forth. But anyway, uh, we're we're glad you're here. Got your Bibles? I want you to turn back to the book of the Revelation, chapter twelve. We started here last week, and we didn't get through. And God's uh, uh, dealt with me all week on this, and I'm just going to try to mind him. Uh, you find your place, if you will, uh, stand with us. We'll begin reading in verse 10 of, of the Revelation chapter 12. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. Now, uh, the devil has access to accuse you and me uh, before God of whatever we do. And I'll tell you, he keeps a watch on us too. And he don't let nothing by. But the Bible said in verse 11, and by the way, uh, men use not righteous enough to, uh, uh, to get out of it or sell. But it said, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they lived not their lives uh, unto death. Let us pray. Ted, you pray with us. Now, we want to take the scriptures and show you what the scripture said that the blood does for us in some places. Uh, because it is all about the blood. Right. It's not about religion. It's not about Baptists. It's not about uh, you and me and what we can do and living right. Don't get me wrong. I believe in living right. Yes. I believe right. when a man gets saved, I believe he will live right now. You can believe whatever you want to, but I believe 
Uh, that he's the new creature. Now, he may, right. he'll do things that he shouldn't do. Uh, he'll go places sometimes that he shouldn't go. Uh, he'll, uh, uh, he'll, he'll say things that he shouldn't say. Uh, but really down deep, there's been a change in him, right. and there's a want to to serve God. That's right. And I, 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 I believe that, uh, that he'll be there. Uh, but the Bible said that the devil, uh, he has access to go to God and to accuse us. And they overcame by the blood, not by my power, by your power, uh, not by my living right or my religion or because I'm a Baptist, uh, but I'm uh, uh, clean before God uh, because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said in Leviticus 17, 11, it said, uh, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given it to you to Amen. offer upon the altar for an atonement. And you see... Uh, when we talk about the blood of the Lord Jesus, uh, we're talking about his life. We're talking about, hey, uh, did you realize that Jesus literally died? Even though he was God, he right. gave up his life. They didn't kill him. They didn't right. take his life. Uh, he laid his life down. Right. Uh, he suffered death that you and I uh, wouldn't have to uh, suffer death. And folks, listen, if you're saved and born again, uh, you'll never know the pangs of death, even though you go out of this body. Uh, even though that you die, you'll never experience uh, the pains of death. I went to the hospital uh, two or three years ago, and they done a, a chemical uh, stress test on me. And that old girl, uh, that nurse said, uh, when she was uh, uh, talking to me, she said, uh, we're going to give you a shot, and you're going to feel like I that you're going to die. I said, really? Uh, and she said, yeah. I said, you ain't going to wheel? And she said, probably not. And uh, I didn't. But uh, anyway, uh, there was a feeling that I had never felt before. And, uh, and uh, it was a strange, and uh, we may have a strange feeling, uh, but when death comes, uh, we'll never feel the pains of death because the Bible said, uh, that Christ has suffered death. Uh, he suffered death for you and me and for every man, woman, boy, and girl. And, uh, the, well, let me hurry on here. Uh, but you see the blood in the book of Colossians, chapter 1 and verse 20. Uh, I talked about this last week, but I'm, I want to mention it again. Uh, it hits so good, I can't uh, get away from it. Uh, the Bible said, and having made peace, through the blood of his cross. Right. Now his blood uh, will bring peace. We're living in a time uh, when there ain't much peace That's in the world. Right. Right. I mean, That's everybody's right. uh, uh, seem like he's got problems. I don't know of a, a family anywhere, whether in church or out of church, uh, that don't have problems. I mean, uh, this pandemic has got everything out of whack. Uh, this, uh, 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 we're going through a time now uh, where that they say that the hackers is uh, uh, going to uh, cause havoc. They closed down the pipeline uh, uh, and made gas go up. And uh, uh, for a week or two hours, it was hard to get. And uh, uh, and they've uh, hacked the meat market now and, uh, and so forth and uh, uh, transportation. Well, uh, I'm glad they can't hack heaven, ain't you? Right. I'm glad they can't get in and... And heck heaven, but uh, there ain't much peace. And everybody has got something uh, that's a troubling them and a bothering them. Right. Right. I mean, we are living in a time uh, when it seemed like they stress on every hand. Let me read you some scripture over here uh, in, the, uh, in the book of Isaiah. Uh, the Bible said in Isaiah uh, chapter 41 and verse 10, Fear thy not. Now he said, uh, fear thy not, for I am with thee. Right. Now, you can't beat that. He said, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Right. Now he said, when all this trouble piles upon you, remember that I'm thy God. That's right. I will strengthen thee, right. yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. He said, I'll never leave thee, I'll Amen. never forsake thee. Let me read you a scripture over here in Isaiah 40 and 28. He said, Hast thou not known? 
Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, uh, feigneth not, neither is worry. There is no watching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increased their strength. Uh, folks, listen, I don't know what you're going through. Uh, some of you's gone through some hard times here lately, and some of you's going through some hard times now, uh, but I want you to know we're going to get through this. Uh, uh, I'll tell you, uh, don't, uh, the, the pandemic and uh, COVID, and uh, uh, I've heard that, and that's, that's all you hear till I just soon you hear something else for a while. Uh, but uh, but uh, we're going to get through it. I mean, we are more than victors. Uh, we are more uh, than conquerors through right. him that loved us right. and gave himself right. for us. Right. And we have peace. And uh, and uh, it's uh, for a minute. Let me read you some scripture here in the book of John. Uh, John chapter 14, uh, I believe it is. In the book of John chapter 14. Uh, not, uh, notice what, uh, what, what that he said here in verse 27. He said, Peace, I leave with you. That's right. Now this is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. My peace I give unto you. The world can't do that. That's right. Billy Graham said that the world can give you happiness, but it takes Jesus to give you joy. That's right. There's a difference between happiness yeah. and joy. And uh, the Bible said in the book of Hebrews that uh, there's pleasure in sin for a season. Amen. And you see, when you're having pleasure, it can bring happiness, but it don't bring joy. Uh, what joy is, Jesus said here, uh, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, the world can't afford that, uh, but I give unto you, let not your heart be troubled, uh, neither... Uh, let it be afraid. And, and uh, I'm over in John chapter 16 and down about verse 33 there. He said, These things I have spoken unto you that ye may have peace. And in the world you shall have tribulation. Mm -hmm. Now, folks, he said you're going to have tribulation. The Bible right. said all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer Persecution. what? Persecution. Amen. Tribulation. Amen. And he said here, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome uh, the world. And you see, I could go on and on and on. Uh, but he said uh, that the blood of Jesus Christ will give peace unto you. I tell you, uh, there ain't nothing like having the peace of God. There's two kinds of peace. There's the peace with God. And then there's the peace of God. Amen. When you got saved by the grace of God, you made peace with God. That's right. You became his child. He became your father. And then after you got saved, uh, you experienced the peace of God. Amen. Now, uh, that's, right. uh, that's the reason that uh, anybody be looking death in the face and waving their hand and thanking God and uh, seeing things that nobody else can. You say, preacher, you really believe they see him? I really believe they see them. Uh, you can believe whatever you want to, but I've seen people that's on their dying bed uh, talking about how beautiful uh, things that they see. Uh, I, I, as preacher told me one time, said that uh, uh, Brother Ed Maccabee, some of you may have heard him, a great preacher, said that uh, he went down to the hospital, they called him, and one of his uh, uh, members was a dying and said that uh, that uh, he'd lived for God, been an asset to the church for years and years, and it'd come time for him to, uh, to leave out of here and said uh, that he got down there and the family's around and uh, he could tell he was a fixing to pass over. And uh, he said there was a nurse come in and she had a syringe and he said, what are you going to do? Uh, she said, I'm going to give you a shot. Uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they will give you a shot sometimes. Uh, they say, I don't know, uh, but to, to help you uh, move out. I don't believe the child of God needs a shot to move out of here. Yes, uh, because I believe that uh, when it comes time to die, I believe God will give dying grace. Amen. I believe that uh, he will make it possible that you can go out. Uh, you won't have to be afraid. You won't have to, uh, uh, you won't have to struggle, but you'll go out. 
uh, in the peace of God. But he that said, uh, that nurse uh, said, I want to give you, he said, I don't want to give you, uh, I don't want a shot uh, because they're coming after me. He said, I can uh, see them coming. Uh, they're not far off and they'll be here in a little bit. And said that nurse turned to him and said, preacher, he don't really see that, does he? And he said, I don't know. I'm not understanding where he is. Uh, but folks, I'll tell you, uh, that's the peace of God that goes with you uh, where nobody else can't go. Also in the, in the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, uh, we read about we are justified uh, by his blood. You know what? Uh, being justified as though uh, we'd never been a sinner. Now, I stayed on that a long time last week. I'm not going to expand on that today. Uh, but I'm glad that you may see me. Uh, you may see my fault. You may see my problem. You may see uh, my shortcoming. But the Heavenly Father, uh, the Lord God of glory, I don't see anything. Amen. When he sees me, uh, he sees Jesus. Amen. You know, when God saw me the last time as I was, uh, when Jesus was hanging on a cross, uh, the Bible said he became us. Uh, when he was hanging on the cross, he was Philip Garland. Uh, he, he was John. Uh, he, he was uh, uh, James and Brad. And uh, he was every man and yeah, woman. Right. God saw him right. as, right. Uh, as us uh, dying on Calvary and uh, paying for sins that we couldn't pay for. It. And therefore, he justified us. Right. And you see me, you can see folks. If you ain't seen no folks, see me. You're blind than a billy goat. Because I've got them. And if you can't see none, you can ask women and she can fill you in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, we can act like we're so. We ain't near as spiritual as we make out like we're That's right. We ain't near as holy as we make out like we're We're all in the same boat. We all lead out of the same trough. Right. We ain't no count. It's the bottom line, uh, no good. If it wasn't for Jesus, we'd be, I mean, right. Right. Uh, right. Uh, I just couldn't explain it. But he and his righteousness yes. makes me as clean yes. and white as snow. Yes. Not nothing I've done. Right. Anything I do is as filthy right. rags in the sight right. of God. Amen. But let me hurry on. I'm going to get a little further today. Not only that, but uh, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us. T and notice with me in the book of 1 John chapter 1. In verse 7, he said, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, yes. they know you for a child of God to walk in the darkness. No, that's right. But he said, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Right. Now, folks, I'll tell you, our fellowship is important. Amen. And to have fellowship, you have to be right. First of all, with God. Or maybe I should have said with your fellow man and then with God. Uh, it's inseparable. Uh, me and John can't have a great division between us and be right with God. The Bible tells us that uh, if we come to the altar and... Remember that our brother has something against us. We have something against our brother uh, to leave our gift there, go and make it right with our brother, and then come back and then receive the gift. Now you say, preacher, that's, that's pretty straight. I didn't write it. If you don't uh, really like that, you can take scissors and cut it out. But that won't change things. He'll still be there. You can probably find your translation where that he'll change it around. But it'll still be there. We've got to be right out with our fellow man before that we can really experience the relationship between us and the Lord Jesus that we ought to. That's right. Now, uh, this is a touchy thing right here. But I'll tell you, and you may never have met one, but there's some people you just can't get along with. 
Bible said to live peaceably with all men as much as life within you. You say, what can I do if I can't get along with somebody? Just don't have nothing to do with it. I mean, uh, uh, it's the, uh, you can figure, hey, that, these ways of figuring it out. I got an old sawmill and somebody got stealing my diesel fuel. In fact, they stole my fuel and I had one of them big aluminum tanks and they stole taking off one night. And, uh, I put me another tank on it, and I studied, and I studied, and I studied. How can I keep you from getting my fuel? And then it hit me. They can't steal it if it ain't there. And I just put in what I need and use. And if it ain't there, they can't steal it. And if they ain't no argument, they can't be a fuss. If they, it takes two to fuss. I mean, you may fuss at yourself a little. I bet you have to have fellowship one with another. You know what would tear this church up uh, quicker than anything? I to get where we couldn't fellowship, where we was divided, where we was mad at one another, and then you can't have service like that. But the Bible said here, if we have fellowship one with another, uh, the, the, the blood of Jesus Christ, you see, they come to cleansing. That's the reason it feels so good to have a distinction between you and your brother and make things right. You ever done that? I have. Yeah. And I mean, it really feels good. I don't, I, I don't like for nobody to be mad at me. Uh, it bothers me for somebody I feel like's hurt at me. I want to make that thing right. Yeah. And if the Bible said, if we have fellowship one with another, and then the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, that blood will cover any sin. Right. That blood will cover any sin. Right. And not only will the blood bring us peace, not only will it justify us, but it will cleanse us and it will redeem us. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, In verse 7, the Bible said, well, let me read, uh, start with verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, yes. to the praise of his glory, of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the blood. What's he saying there? He's saying uh, that the only thing that he gets from saving us is when we honor him and praise him. I mean, you're no benefit to him. You say, preacher, I, I mean, ain't you seen what I do? Uh, just like me. He could replace us any time yes, right. with right. somebody a lot better. Right. I mean, True, somebody that could do a better job. Right. You ever get the feeling like you uh, that the church can't make it without just kick out a day or two? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I ain't, and I don't quit church. But if you feel like the church can't make it without you, just, I mean, some of the best services in churches that I've pastored is when I wasn't there. I, I mean, when we were going on vacation or something, I'd get some preacher to come in. It'd have off the service there was and makes me wonder. I mean, it's like I've said many times. Don't it make you wonder when you stay at home or somewhere and we have the best service you ever see? I mean, <laughs> sometimes you say, well, maybe I was because we ain't been having goodness. But the only payment he gets is how that we reflect him into this world. I mean, we need to reflect the Lord Jesus from our life in our testimony. But it said in verse 7, in whom? Now, if you'll notice in the book of Ephesians here, there's a channel there uh, that runs in, and it all runs in uh, the Lord Jesus. Notice he said, 
uh, uh, for that, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Right. You know what redemption is? It's to buy back. Right. It's to, uh, it's to, uh, it's to reclaim something that uh, has been lost. And Adam lost it in the Garden of Eden. And uh, Adam lost it, but uh, he gained it back on the cross and, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Right. He gained it back. Right. We are redeemed. We're not saved because of who we are. Right. We are saved because he paid the price yes, right. and Amen. he redeemed us. That's right. It's like if I bought a car or a house and uh, I'm making payments on it. And I got behind on my payments and the bank came and repossessed it. And it wouldn't be mine anymore. But suppose that uh, Brad here, he had, a, uh, he had a lot of money and he come down and uh, out of this, the goodness of his heart without any promise or anything to gain back, he went ahead and paid my loan off and got my house or my car back. Uh, you see, that would be redeeming. That's exactly what Amen. Jesus done. Uh, when we was lost and on the road to hell and, uh, and uh, we didn't know where we were going and uh, if we did, we couldn't change things. Uh, he come along and paid the price and I'm glad uh, that he paid the price that uh, you and I couldn't pay and redeemed us back to God. And we're sitting here today uh, saved uh, going to heaven as children of God uh, because Jesus Christ Blood paid uh, for our sin debt. Amen. Nothing good you and I done. And besides that, if he hadn't come along one day and told us we was lost, we'd never got saved no how. Right. Amen. I mean, he picked us right. out. Right. Sometimes I get feeling like it, uh, I ain't nothing that I really am. Then I'll get thinking about it. You know, God could have saved billions of people. Tonight he saved me. Yeah. Amen. But he came to me personally. Right. Right. I mean, it, just to me. Yeah. The Lord God of heaven came down and invited me to be saved. Yes. Right. Amen. You know, over in John chapter 5, Jesus went down one day uh, to, pool, uh, to the pool of Bethesda. And the Bible said they was blind and hauled and uh, 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 folks laying in there is crippled. And they was waiting for the trouble in the water because uh, once a year there was an angel come down from heaven and troubled the water. And whosoever uh, stepped in first was made whole of whatsoever disease that he had. Yeah. Let me jump off here and preach here just a minute. It didn't matter who there was, whosoever. Right. It didn't matter what they'd done whatsoever. But there ain't no whensoever in there. Jesus come through there. And I don't know that he done this, but I've always kind of figured he did. As he went around the crowd, and he'd maybe have to step over somebody, go around somebody. But he knew who he was going after. Yeah. And he went to this man that had an infirmity for 38 years. And he said, you want to be saved? You want to get, uh, uh, how'd you like to be? He said, every time I start down, somebody jumps in front of me. I mean, Jesus said, just take up your bed and walk. I mean, he come to him. And that's what he done to you and me. I mean, he come to us. Uh, some of you was good morally. I mean, you as clean as a whistle, uh, morally and as honest and didn't lie and didn't uh, uh, do a lot of things that other people done in the world, but some of us uh, had a lot of faults and we was ungodly. Right. 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 And it didn't make any difference. Right. When he come to us, he offered us the same salvation. Yes. 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 Amen. He said, that my blood has paid for your sins. I mean, not only that, Hebrews chapter 9. Now I'm a hurrying. 
Hebrews uh, chapter 9. Down about verse 14. Well, let me read verse 13. For the blood of bulls and of goats and of ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God to purge your conscience? Right. Or to clean your conscience. You know, how many times have we heard people say, when I got saved, it felt like the world is lifted off of me. God done away with them sins. But you know, he didn't only suffer for our sins. He didn't only suffer in the flesh for our sins. But he took upon himself the guilt of every sin we commit. Right, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've done things that I felt like an egg sucking dog when it was over. Did you ever do anything? And I won't ask none of you personally. But have you ever done anything that the next day you meet somebody and you had a lot of confidence in them as a Christian, you was ashamed to meet them? I have. I mean, I was just ashamed to be around them. That's guilt. But Jesus died. Not only was his sins put on, our sins was put on him. Our guilt was put on him. I mean, he felt the guilt that you and I uh, feel and should, uh, should feel. But he took that away. The blood of Jesus Christ will purge our conscience from uh, dead works to serve the living God. Amen. I mean, it's clean, clean it up. Amen. Well, back over in the uh, b- uh, book of, uh, uh, of Ephesians, chapter 2. Not only that, Ephesians chapter th- 2 and verse 13. Well, let me read verse 12. I tell you, it's hard to read one verse thing. Right. He said, now at that time you were without Christ. That's you and me. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. From the covenant of promise. Having no hope, but, and without God in the world. That was where we was at. Right. We was right. aliens. I mean, you've heard enough about news about aliens. And uh, did you see on the news where that uh, the Air Force said they may have seen an alien aircraft? I mean, you say does that bother? You? Don't bother me. I got a God that's in control of space. He's in control of the earth, and He's in control of me, and He's in control of everybody that's going to do anything to me. Right. Because he's God. But we was aliens. You know what an alien is? He's a different country. We are living in a different country than we really belong. The Bible said in verse 12 that in the times you were without Christ, we was aliens. We was uh, not a Jew. Strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope. And without God in the world. But now. But now. It's different. But now in Christ Jesus. Ye who sometimes were afar off. Are made nigh. By the blood of Christ. Amen. I mean. I'm not a Jew. I'm. Certainly not an angel. I was just an alien. But now, I'm a child of God. If you're saved, you're a child of God. You are registered in heaven. The Apostle Peter said, uh, uh, the Apostle Peter said, but uh, uh, we have uh, 
I, I mean, we have reservations right. in heaven. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know a lot about reservations. I ain't never made none, hardly. But uh, if you got a reservation, there's a time that you're supposed to arrive. Right. And when you arrive, there's a place for you. Nobody else can get that place. Right. If you're safe, God has got a time that you're going to be there. And ain't nobody can take your place. Ain't nobody can scrounge you out. Ain't nobody can take your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Ain't you glad of that? I mean, the world will put you down. The world will get you down. How the world would destroy you if it could, but there ain't nobody can take your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. There's two times in the Bible that uh, we have the right to rejoice. Jesus said, when men revile you, when men speak falsely, when men uh, over nothing, they uh, use you, he said, leap with joy, jump and a uh, leap of joy for great is your reward in heaven. You can shout then. Right. Or if you remember, you must happen to remember that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes, man. You have a right to rejoice Amen. and to shout. Amen. Anytime you remember where you're at home, where you're in church, where you're at work, uh, wherever you're at, if you remember that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, right. yes. you have a perfect right to go ahead and praise God. Yes. Amen. And to shout. Amen. Folks, it's all about the blood. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb right. and by the word of their testimony. Amen. They lived it. Their testimony wasn't what I they said, but it was what they done. Yeah. When we was talking last night, she said, she was talking about they were called Christians were first. In Antioch. That's right. That's right. I mean, Bible don't mention Christians much. Maybe what, right. three times in the Bible? But a Christian ought to be a light in the world. Yes. And all we can look for is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to pray. And while we pray, I want to ask you, Greg, you come over and play something on the piano for us. If you had the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life, to your sins, are you saved? Do you have peace with God? Do you know that you know that you know that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Folks, is every head's bowed and every eye closed for just a minute. What she plays, we're going to play about two verses. And if the Holy Spirit of God speaks to your heart to come to this side, we want you to get up and just move down to the altar. I mean, you may be here and lost. You may be here and you've been saved and you ain't living where you ought to. You may be here and troubles just piled up on you and you don't know what to do. Which way to turn? You might say, Preacher, I need to get an altar. And I need to ask help. Some of you women come around and pray with her. Help her. They might be somebody else. Say, Preacher, I just need to. I just feel like I need to come to the altar. Sometimes we need to come, maybe not know the specific thing we do. Right now, before we pray, I want to fix somebody else. Say, preacher, I need to come. Going anywhere. Dorsey, you pray with us. You pray with us.
You know, I believe if you be honest, these times every one of us needs to get in an altar somewhere. If you don't, you need to, I guarantee it. I mean, well, it's, it's been good to be here. i tell you what I want us to do. We're going to change the service a minute. Uh, uh, Mason, if you'll come over here, please. And Barry, will you come for Carly? I said, that's close enough. <laughs> uh, I tell you, we're proud of Mason here. Yeah. I think Mason's a fine boy. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah. Eugene, this is the guy for his mother. <laughs> Amen. Mine took a little like his granddad, uh, but uh, we're proud of him. And. Uh, I thank God that uh, that he, uh, uh, I don't think it surprised anybody he graduated from school. Now, uh, some folks that graduate, I know I, that I, I surprised a lot of folks when I graduated. Uh, but Mason graduated, and, no, and it's not a surprise. He's a good student. Uh, he's an asset to our church. He's a, yeah, I mean, he's something that, uh, and I miss you, Mason, when you ain't here. That ain't much, but some people you don't miss. And I don't mean that to be mean, but they don't come enough to miss. <laughs> but there's other people that, uh, if they ain't here, they miss. But anyway, I'll, I'll be quiet. And uh, uh, we, we uh, got them a Bible. And the reason I'm uh, looking here, that's Carly's. Uh, Carly, Vera's oldest daughter, is a member of this church. She graduated this year, and we got her a, a Bible. But uh, Mason, we got you an old Schofield Bible. Uh, with your name on it there, and uh, uh, bring that back, and a year or two wore out, and we'll try to ship it. Amen. 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 Will you accept Carly's and see if she gets you? Let's give him a big hand. Appreciate you. All right, we got any birthdays? Jones? No. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> no, mine is way back there. Who were they? Said they had fun tomorrow. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> we'll get you next Sunday. Everybody, don't forget, Brother Brad. You can't preach no word next Sunday now. <laughs> uh, well, Harold, Harold, Brother Harold Lewis did tell me that Tilda Jane has an anniversary today. <laughs> so, uh, and if y'all don't mind me announcing these, you can tell me, or even if you do, somebody else might tell on you, we can announce your wedding anniversary. 56 years? 56 years? How many years you been married? 58. 50. 56 years? She's looking away. So. <laughs> I love it. That's all. That's today, June sixth. Is that today? No, not today. No, June sixth. June sixth. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. So Harold and So Harold and Tilda Jane's been married one day longer than me and Val. 
24 years ago, tomorrow. So, all right. Um, don't forget, uh, if we got any visitors, we want to know you're welcome. We like to have a good time here at Coffee Ridge. We appreciate you being with us. Uh, come back anytime. Um, don't forget, Bible school starts tomorrow night, 6.30 every night. Uh, we're not doing meals again this year, sorry, but uh, because of the, the virus and all the junk, we're going to put that off another year for that, but we're going to have Bible school every night this week at 6.30, so don't forget that. Deacon's meeting at 5 o'clock and business meeting after church tonight. Then I'm going to go through the uh, prayer list. Does anybody else have an announcement that, that wants to be mentioned? All right, let's go over our prayer list. Pastor Phillips, Sister Wilma, Emmy Joe, Terry and Becky, Peggy Tilson, Laura Parker, Lynn Edwards, Brother Dorsey's wife, Lynn Edwards, Brother Guy's wife, Daniel Tilson, Tanya Bradford, her family, Jared Foster, Lana's mom, Lorena, Larry Massey, Robert Rice, and his family, Janet Morrow's husband, Theodore, Juanita Willis, Cindy Bowman's mother, son, niece, and nephew, Margaret Edwards, Vic and Nancy. Let's remember that family. They lost Harrison this weekend. Let's remember them. Yes. They've had a lot going on this, in the last few months. They really need, need our prayers. Um, Sharon Slagle and her mother, Tina Wampler, Junior Carver, Paula Mary Skinto, Terry Williams, Roy Williams, Roxana Rogers, Kathy Lochner, Amy Hensley, Riley's great-grandmother, Tammy Tipton and Zeb, don't forget. Caden, Haley Bowman's cousin. Avery Glass. Uh, the family of Jill Bergner, don't forget them. Uh, Wayne's family, just remember them. Andrea Smith, Janet Deaton, Ben Brackens, Kevin Willis, that's Jeff's son. Connie and Ted Cutshaw. Phillips, all three of his sisters been sick, let's remember them. Marie Johnson, Hazel Lloyd, Alex. Foster, don't forget him, Nikki Cox, Debbie Bradshaw, Tim Harris, Rebecca Hale, Sammy Adomi, Jonathan Whitson, Bobby Shelton, Gene Bly, Tony Marolt, Preacher Bob McCurry, Edna Howard, Evelyn Chandler and daughter Sharon, JC and Jenny Stiles, Tony McCormick, Michael Smith's mother, Dennis Foster, Margaret Monday, Vanna Amos, Michelle Murdoch, um, and then there's a young man, Jackson, we, we mentioned last Sunday, the young man, I haven't heard an update. Does anybody know an update on the little boy, the six-year-old boy? Well, he's going to go get to go home uh, tomorrow for the day. They won't find out the pathology or what he has, been, but he's praying that he's doing okay. Okay. Remember that young man. <clears throat> he's right here in our, our community. His dad works at the plant, so let's remember that. Um, remember Gary Tipton? I'm not sure. Does anybody know a report on Gary? He went to see a cancer doctor this week too, I think. Um, remember all, just all, everybody's got their own problems going on with COVID and different things. Remember our country, our school system and different things. We know what to remember in prayer. Anybody else got one you want to add? With Gary, he's still having some tests done. They're redoing a back test. Okay. Remember Gary. Hopefully. Okay. Gary's like one of the family. Let's remember Gary too. My best remember Sue. She's going to be up here on Tuesday. That's right. Yep. Uh, on her knee. Let's remember her. Let's keep remembering Tammy and Sue. Yep. Yeah. And uh, let's keep remembering Francis. Yep. I mean, they just ate all kinds of things to pray for. Right. I could probably list every one of us in here. It's yep. hard to it's hard to remember everybody, but yeah, let's remember each other. Who? Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Chad's dad, Teresa Heathers. <laughs> so I can put him down as honey. Everybody knows honey now, okay. All right, anything else? All right, let's all stand. We'll dismiss in a word of prayer. <clears throat> Brother John Willis, will you dismiss us?
Our church, God, thank you so much for your blessings, God. We love you. With everything you do, God, we love you. We love you. Be with all these that are on this prayer list, God. I pray that you bless each one. Heal those bodies, God. Be with us. God, I pray. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Amen.